Hi, my name is Stacy, and I am the co-founder of CBD BioCare, and joining us is Dr. Frank Michalski. He is a certified functional medicine expert, a CBD BioCare expert, also CBD expert, and a chiropractor in Buffalo, New York. And today we're going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, uh, it, Parkinson's. And uh, there is, if you just search Parkinson's and CBD, uh, it, and it's, it's amazing what you will see. And this is an area that we're hearing more and more about in terms of cannabis being a great alternative medicine. Hi, Dr. Frank. How are you, Stacy? I am doing great. And so it may have surprised you when I said that this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, uh, but my father-in-law has Parkinson's and takes medication for Parkinson's, but yet he still had the inevitable tremors. And in fact, one day um, he was trying to take a sip of coffee and, his, and he was shaking so much to where he was afraid that he was going to spill it. And I said, you know, Wayne, the CBD oil that I provide, that I sell, really is helping people with tremors. And he's like, you don't, you don't say, you know, that kind of thing. Of and uh, long story short, uh, I had some in my purse. I gave it to him. And within literally minutes of me giving it to him, he started drinking his cup of coffee again. And I said, do you notice something about your hand? And he kind of looked and he says, it's not shaking. And I said, that's the CBD. And he said, well, man, look at that. And he was so impressed and, you know, so impressed, but wasn't like, you know, if it was me, I'd be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I had seen it before. Uh, I knew what was going to happen. But my point is that people with Parkinson's, even though they're taking medicine, a lot of times still have the tremors. And we have seen a lot of people with, tremendous success taking CBD oil. And another great thing that I want to add is that they don't have to take a lot to get results. So what is the science? Why is it helping people? Why is CBD helping people with this, uh, this disease we call Parkinson's? Yeah, of course. So I think the easiest place to start in kind of answering that question is, so Parkinson's falls under a category of disease processes called neurodegenerative diseases, okay? And these are diseases that encompass slow cell death, okay? So what we're seeing in neurodegenerative disease is death of cells inside of our brain or inside of our spinal cord, okay? So you have your central nervous system, and when the cells in that nervous system start to become damaged or die off, like in the case of many neurodegenerative diseases, we start to see damage occur. Now, the actual physiology behind that, without going into too much detail, is your body contains proteins. And for those people watching who don't know this, proteins are essential to our ability to function throughout life. They're just, they're critical. Proteins are responsible for carrying communication signals between different systems in your body. They act as a bridge to help your brain communicate with your spine, to communicate with organs, okay, to communicate speech. The proteins in individuals suffering from neurodegenerative diseases <coughs> become misfolded. They become changed. The shape of them actually changes. Now, when this protein isn't the right shape, that's when things start to go wrong. It can no longer carry out its job appropriately. So this is a big reason why these individuals start suffering from movement disorders, speech disorders, memory loss. One of the largest neurodegenerative diseases, and I may be wrong, is I think we did a podcast on it, is Alzheimer's disease. This is currently one of the largest neurodegenerative diseases that is leading to dementia. Dementia being a common symptom of neurodegenerative disease, whether it's in Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or someone who's younger, perhaps a Huntington's disease. So it's just important to understand that people suffering from these diseases can have both physical symptoms, the pill rolling tremors like we'll see in Parkinson's, or they can suffer from mental symptoms of most often apathy and forgetfulness. So these are just a few of the things to look for, but depression, anxiety, constipation, all these other things eventually come into play, aggression, agitation, because they're not processing things correctly. Um, specific to Parkinson's, 
I, if people have seen our podcast on ADHD or when we touched on depression in the past, we talk a lot about the dopamine production in the brain. Dopamine being a neurotransmitter that's responsible for movement and making us feel good and plays vital roles across many functions of our brain. Those dopamine centers become damaged in Parkinson's and that's what leads to such a wide array of effects. We know from studying other diseases, though, that CBD seems to have a very positive impact on those dopamine receptors. But I suppose the next question that people often ask would be is, what causes these diseases? And we'll jump into that in a moment after we, after we clarify anything else. You're going to make me wait for that? That, that, is, a, <laughs> that is a very you know, curious question. Um, people always want to know how they can avoid it, right? Uh, so what is it that the CBD is actually doing? If, and I would be curious to know, um, because what, of what I've seen in my father-in-law, is he, he has to continue to take the CBD. It's not like he takes it one time and now he doesn't have tremors. He takes it on a daily basis. In fact, he'll call me whenever he's running low and they say, you know, I really need some more CBD because um, he doesn't want to go back to that. He tells me that the tremors are actually uncomfortable. So, um, you know, I would be curious to know what your opinion is and, um, you know, does it help everybody with Parkinson's? Is it very individual? What's been your experience? Of course. So this is what I'll, I'll, I'll start with. So, and this is a great way to lead into what causes this. When they're starting to study diseases like Parkinson's, picture this, and we've talked about this in our inflammation podcast in detail. So if people didn't watch that, I would advise they do. Neurodegenerative disease, Parkinson's in particular, is a process of toxic buildup or toxic waste inside the nerve cells. This toxic waste is believed to be the result of oxidation inflammatory reactions occurring, okay? So I describe oxidation as rusting on a car, but instead of it happening in the car, it's happening to the cells in the brain, okay? Or if someone leaves an avocado out overnight and it turns brown or a banana as it oxidizes. Imagine that same type of thing happening within the body. Now, with that being said, when we use CBD, and we can take this right from the government patent, it acts as a powerful antioxidant. And that is probably one of the most important things when it comes to CBD benefiting individuals with Parkinson's disease. Now, for those listeners who aren't familiar with the patent, I'm just going to read some of the bulk parts of it for people. Cannabinoids have been found to have antioxidant properties. This newfound property makes them useful in the prophylaxis, which would imply prevention of, a wide variety of oxidation-associated diseases. The patent goes on to talk about using it for people with stroke and head trauma, but they also mention this, or in the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and HIV-related dementia. So I think for anyone who's kind of doubtful or on the edge, they can just look right to the government patent that was obtained because they stated in that patent that CBD, specifically cannabidiol, is beneficial as a neuroprotectant and as a neuroantioxidant. And that's really what these individuals need. They need to stop or at least slow down that oxidation, that cellular rusting reaction from occurring within the body. So again, we're starting to look at the cause of a lot of these diseases being genetics and being an accumulation of toxic waste. Now, whether that's due to foods we're eating, toxins we're exposed to in the environment, um, any number of things, we can't pinpoint it. We want to stop that oxidation process, and CBD seems to be just one of the ways to do that. Why do you think that it actually stops? Because obviously uh, what you're talking about, it, it, it being a neuroprotectant, um, it's protecting the brain, helping to heal, if you will, or be a remedy for the brain um, in that oxidation. But why do you think it actually shows up in a, in a tremor? Do you, do you know? So that's a complicated question. And, and no, I don't know if we know the answer to that 100% when it comes to a tremor. They are doing a lot of studies on CBD and its impact on the CB2 receptors, the, the CB2 receptors within the immune system. And that's where they're starting to see a lot of benefit. 
How exactly that would relate to calming down a tremor, I don't know the specifics of that. With that being said, I can tell people this. You mentioned earlier in this podcast, just Google CBD and Parkinson's disease online and you will find YouTube video after YouTube video where you see people being administered a type of usually sublingual CBD oil and they'll show a time lapse of maybe five minutes. And a lot of it has to do with those hand movements. And what you'll see is that individual suddenly stops that tremor, those shakes, they begin to decrease. The exact science as to why that is, I'm not sure of it at this moment, but I can tell you they're focusing a lot on the interaction between cannabidiol and its interaction with the CB2 receptor within the immune system. That seems to be where a lot of the focus is right now. It's really fascinating because I've seen it happen in front of me to where the tremor uh, disappears. Uh, we have a child of an employee that has tremors and doctors don't really know why, but the CBD calms the tremors. Seems to be a calming effect for his little system altogether, but, but it, it, it's really exciting when we see it right before our eyes. Even if science hasn't told us exactly what's going on, we see it happening and we know that it's a plant. We know that it's about as dangerous as aloe vera or orange juice. And so that's what's really exciting is that we're having these amazing scientific breakthroughs with this plant that we're just now hearing about. And the research is actually coming behind some of the benefits that we're seeing right before our eyes. And, you know, Stacey, as you were talking about that, it, it did pop into my head. And there may be some existing information on this with the tremors because we see it all the time firsthand too. We've had two patients, they were actually in here for chronic pain, but they suffered from Parkinson's due to the sporadic movements. It was causing a great amount of back pain for these individuals. Um, with that being said, I believe, and we're, we're probably going to see more of this, there may be some research out there that I just haven't come across. It probably has to do with the impact CBD has on dopamine because dopamine can play a large role in, in, in many aspects of our central nervous system. And I have a feeling it's going to be related to CBD's impact on the dopamine and the dopamine receptors. That's probably where people should look if they want a more detailed explanation of that. Um, but it is amazing what we've seen in our offices as well too. And I'll tell you, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much for people to see results. So to your point, being able to use a product that is safe and being able to use a product that's effective, especially in perhaps a very low amount, what more could you ask for? Absolutely. And it's like with anything, um, you know, you, you choose a starting point. Um, if you're trying to use CBD as a remedy for anything, then I would suggest 750 be the lowest uh, milligram that you go with. 500 is more for, for just healthy individuals who really just want to take a supplement and uh, maybe be more, they're, they're trying to keep that oxidative stress down, right? And they're just trying to take a supplement that's good for them to help um, air on the side of prevention, um, as opposed to somebody who's trying to fight off any type of ailment. If you're in pain, we recommend the 1500 or the 3500. Um, but for Parkinson's, I would suggest people start with the 750 and see if that could be sufficient for them. Would you agree with that? I think that's a very safe bet. When you look at other literature on this, they do recommend starting with the micro dosing levels, which would be a smaller amount maybe around 10 milligrams to 30 milligrams a day, and then slowly working your way up. They do have reports of people needing that macro dose level, but it's not that often that people are hitting that point. In my experience and what we see here, people are seeing benefit way before needing to increase. So I think the 750 is an excellent starting point. And I want to throw this out there too, especially because it was mentioned in the patent. They talk about CBD for prophylaxis of neurodegenerative diseases, perhaps even prevention of. For individuals where this is a genetic component, where they are at perhaps a genetic predisposition to these diseases, they have to remember something. When symptoms come on, the pill rolling tremors, when the forgetfulness, when the apathy begins, there has already been about 60% destruction or 60% cell death. This is not something that is easily reversed, and many times it cannot be reversed. 
So I'm hoping and I'm expecting to see in the future a lot of research for taking CBD and finding a dose of CBD that's going to work for prevention for people who are predisposed to these neurodegenerative diseases. And again, when you consider by the time it's diagnosed, there's already been 60% destruction, that's a scary thought considering you can't get that 60% back in most, most all cases. I don't think there's any literature pointing that you're able to restore that. But when it comes to CBD, you might be able to slow that down. And I think we're seeing it. Now, at the very least, a lot of these individuals are able to begin restoring their quality of life, right? Maybe it doesn't help completely with the, the forgetfulness or the apathy, but what if their pain decreases? What if the anxiety decreases? What if the agitation starts to decrease? Those would be symptoms that could potentially improve that are definitely worth getting excited about when it comes to neurodegenerative diseases. Absolutely, because now it may slow down the symptoms or even eliminate them or help people cope with the symptoms, um, always sleep and anti-pain, getting rid of the inflammation. But I love the idea of what you've touched on is talking about CBD to help prevent uh, some of these conditions. I mean, if we all, I mean, wouldn't it be great? I had a doctor sit in my office one time and he um, had, had really researched CBD and it really was before his time and um, even writing, writing articles and such. But he said, all of us, because of our society and what, what has happened in terms of we're not receiving the, the cannabinoids naturally anymore because, for example, cannabis, it's you know, illegal in so many areas, um, that he claimed we all have a cannabinoid deficiency. And if that's the case, if, if this is something that our body responds so well to and 2,000 plus years ago was readily available in the, in the food that we ate and the, the environment that we had and now it's depleted, it, it kind of makes sense. And uh, you know, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that all of us could benefit from a product like this. It just depends on, on which milligram you would take. It, it's, it's a healthy supplement that can really benefit all of us even if at its most basic, um, you know, just trying to help avoid inflammation. I firmly believe that too. On a really basic level, and you're seeing a lot of literature coming out about this, neurodegenerative disease, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, these, this is a very hot topic right now in medicine, but especially in the holistic world. We talk a lot about our physical bodies degenerating over time, wear and tear on our joints, from inflammatory foods, wear and tear on our joints from abusing them over the years, exposure to toxins. What they're finding is that the central nervous system, your brain and your spinal cord, are subject to that same wear and tear. So if we know CBD is working so well for people suffering from chronic pain, and you can see that just by going online, looking through forms, it's not hard to find that information. I believe firmly we're going to find that same benefit and we're already starting to see it for neurodegenerative diseases. I think the takeaway point of this is it's stopping or at least slowing down degeneration. And we're all subject to degenerative changes. We're all subject to the aging process. So any way that we can go about slowing that process down, I feel there's, there's significant benefit to that area of research. Absolutely. I'm all on board on that one. Um, so we mentioned that the 750 would be a start, a safe starting point. What would you recommend in terms of how much someone should start with? So there's a few different ways to go about this. I've seen it quoted where people could go as, as much as 10 milligrams split up three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, 10 milligrams in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, and 10 in the evening. I've also seen it recommended where, and this is what we do with people here, we usually start people between five and 10 milligrams for that first dose, and then we add on another five, another five. So five in the afternoon, five towards the evening. So that's 10 in the morning, five in the afternoon, five in the evening, and that's a starting dose of 20 milligrams a day. Now, I look for those basic common, I'll call them side effects, but usually people report a dull headache. If they took too much, that's the most common thing we hear that's about as bad as it gets for people, a dull headache. If that individual comes back in and says, hey, I had a dull headache, 
we cut back. Most people that I'm working with probably end between 30 and 50 milligrams a day that we see in my offices. Now, as a disclaimer, obviously we're not working with hundreds of Parkinson's patients here. So it, of course, someone else might have a different take on that. But I, I, I must say in the book, um, CBD oil, what you need to know, they do quote going up into those macro doses ranges, the macro dose ranges for individuals suffering from advanced Parkinson's. So I think it depends on the, the stage of the disease and it depends on the symptoms that the individual is suffering from. I think that's a, that's a great recommendation. You can find more on our website under CBD 101 and then CBD oil servings, and it will give you a little bit more information. But I think the information that Dr. Frank is giving today is very, very great information, kind of talking about overall what we've seen and what we believe it can do. But always our recommendation is start low. You can always increase or decrease. If you find that you have a dull headache or even you, you have, um, you, maybe it's relaxing you too much or giving you actually too much energy, then you can kind of go up and down with your uh, serving sizes and figure out where it works for you. And it is so individual. I wish that I could tell you that it's a one size fits all, but it really isn't. But what we know and what we believe to be true is that CBD can help people with Parkinson's if you're taking a good quality CBD product. So thank you, Dr. Frank. I think this was just invaluable information for the, for unfortunately the thousands, if not millions of people out there suffering from this disease. It's a horrible disease, and I think anything you can do conservatively to prevent it or possibly even um, you know, lessen the symptoms is well worthwhile. I'll encourage our listeners to, we say this all the time, look at the studies on exercise and look at the studies on nutrition while you can too because nutrition and exercise plays a huge role when it comes to managing neurodegenerative diseases. I say it all the time, use CBD as a starting point to a healthy future. So. Love it. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Thank you, Stacey.